I want you to get together. Hello everyone. Sorry I've not been around lately. Um, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos a week ago, I was on holiday um, celebrating my one year wedding anniversary with my lovely wife. And we uh, decided to travel uh, to Lincoln in the UK. Um, now Lincoln, for me, is a bit of a home away from home. I actually lived there for three years while I was studying for my fine arts degree. I was uh, blessed enough to be able to have my uh, studio and lecture hall right next to the cathedral, just below it on the hill. Uh, so I had uh, one hell of a view every single day. And I suppose in a way this might be why this whole Tartaria thing, this whole Millennial Kingdom topic, <laughs> was kind of kind of got to me so much, you know, and why it, it, it perked up my ears when it began to become a thing, because I spent a good portion of my adult life, you know, next to what could possibly be <laughs> a remnant of the millennial reign of Christ. And going back there, you know, I, I am looking at all with brand new eyes now, trying to see what I missed. You know what I what I wasn't paying attention to in in light of this new perspective, and you know I'll show some pictures as I'm talking that I took here. But you know when I, when I got to the top of Steep Hill, which is the only hill in Lincoln, you know, and, and saw this this thing, this this cathedral again, you know, and again it's something I'd seen a thousand times before. But when you take a few years off, you know, and you go see it again, it's it's truly breathtaking. And it's actually really hard to look at because there's just there's so much detail in, in the thing. There's so much going on in there that you, my brain cannot process what I'm looking at easily. And it kind of gives a really psychedelic effect to the mind. You know, it really it plays with the eyes and it strains them because your brain's trying to take in the whole picture. You know, widen your pupils to, to take as much information in as you can looking at the front of this cathedral and it can't it just can't handle it there's just too much <laughs> and so that, that was an interesting feeling and um, and it reminded me that yeah these things truly are something else you know they are a a magnificent display of creation you know, of architecture you know they, they, a lot of thought clearly went into them a lot of effort and time which no, I enjoyed I enjoyed seeing it again. Um, but obviously, I came at it with a few questions, a few a few a few things I needed to kind of tackle while looking at them. And that was so just how much demonic iconography is all over these things then that I wouldn't have prior noticed, you know, because a lot of people argue that these buildings can't be from the reign of Christ because there's too much evil plastered all over them whether it be, you know, old gods and pagan gods or demons or snakes and things like that and gargoyles, you know, just monsters. Um, so I looked for them and, you know, I was looking around and it was a mix of, of both, of, of saints, you know, and godly people um, and gargoyles and serpents and really questionable things. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, they are there. I mean, I was looking around, and even on, you know, they have the typical giant door at the front as well, and you look up at this thing and wonder, like, who was this for? <laughs> this is this is enormous. But you look at the arch, the arch uh, above it, and, and the intricate detail and artwork upon it, and they've put on these pillars some insane things, some really strange things. Um, demons with their mouths open, with serpent dragons coming out as their tongues, for example. And... You have to wonder, like, why is this around the entrance to this grand cathedral, the supposed main entrance, you know? Why is this what's all adorning the, the thing you're walking through, you know, the demon mouths? And I was looking up as well, and it's, it's been renovated recently, you see. There's actually some stonemasons, like a lodge just next to it, I think. I don't know if it's a lodge or actually a, a real mason's workshop, um where they get the people to fix the stones to go back to keep the thing up to date, you know. And that's where I realised, well, actually, you know, if this has always been here, and this facade, you know, I, I remember last time I visited, a lot of it was covered up because they was having renovation work done on it. And there was some new artwork on there, which was clearly fresh compared to the older sandstone. 
like brand new must have gone up within the past year and they were recreating some of the older more decayed sandstone artwork which was on the front of this cathedral and i realized you know well yes a lot of this could have just been added at a later date because there's a lot of weathering all over this cathedral so the facade looks brand new because it's been kept maintained and stones have been replaced you know and i realized during these replacement efforts they could have easily just swapped out what was originally there for these more demonic images quite recently to be honest um because you look at the front and it's so shiny and pristine and perfect it's been kept in good condition there's some weathering here and there but a lot of the blocks are clearly brand new as well uh, but then when you start to walk around the back of the cathedral it gets darker more waterlogged more stained with with grime and greens and browns you know and the the stones are a lot more heavily weathered and chipped away and smoothed and and you can tell they haven't put as much effort into maintaining the, the sides or the back of this cathedral as much as they've they've focused on the front entrance facade you know and you start looking at the back and the sides and you can see that you know this glorious building isn't so glorious from these angles it's uh it's falling apart you know and this for me first of all outright denies the claim that people make that these are remnants of an evil civilization before the flood of Noah. There's no way these buildings would have lasted that long. 4,000, 5,000 years. These things can't, can barely make it through a couple of hundred years before the stones need replacing. Um, they're not that old. Okay, so that doesn't fit in with that theory that Noah's flood came and these things survived somehow. That doesn't work. But it does seem like they have gone through typical weathering for about maybe a thousand years or so. Something like that, okay? And you can see where they've replaced the old stones with the new. You can see this, the stark contrast in difference to the renovated, to the, to the older, you know? And I'm not going to lie, a lot of Lincoln Cathedral needs renovating. Um, some, especially around the back. There's a lot of weird stuff going on there and a lot of defaced artwork as well. So when I got to the very back of the cathedral... Um, I was looking up at and seeing how, just how many faces they've embedded into the artwork and you don't know who these faces are of exactly some of them are demonic some of them look human but one which I thought was very strange and I've got a photo it might be a little bit blurry uh, but I did get a photo of it and it shows a face that clearly has two sharp protruding horns coming out of the skull but the face has been chipped away not eroded through weather, it's been defaced. It's been clipped off with a chisel. Um, and that was bizarre, because that seems to be the only example of that I could find on the cathedral. And I was looking at it with a keen eye, you know. And that seems to be the only one which looked like it had been purposefully removed. Someone had purposefully removed this demon face, this horned monster. And I wanted to know what the face would have looked like. Because, you know, I was looking around and I'm getting Gorgon-esque, Nephilim-esque features. You know, clown-like features um, for a lot of these. Big, wide grins, you know, with sharp fangs and things like this. And I would have wondered if, if the face of that, that particular demon would have had something like a Greek Gorgon look to it. Um, and why remove that, exactly? Um... Because then you have to think about the narrative, okay, well, if, if these were built by evil fallen angels to venerate themselves and not Jesus, as some people say, why would they have chipped away the demonic in their own image like that? Um, so the, the story does and doesn't square here with, with the evil people build them. I think from what I've seen from the renovation attempts and how... Those serpents with the tongue sticking out, for example, around the archway, they look quite new. They're like a new addition. It may not have been the case originally that there was so much demonic iconography on the outside of this cathedral when it was first built. It seems like that's something that was added afterwards. I mean, even on one of the pillars, for example, one of the masons was having a laugh because it looks like there's a naked man there with his rear end facing the people and something being stuck up there. That's what it looks like, okay? And it's kind of, you know... The artist who made that clearly did it on purpose. I don't think that was a part of the original design, for example. Um, I, I do think the masons who renovate it regularly, and maybe all cathedrals have their own 
resident mason faction there, you know, to continuously renovate, have been replacing the original artwork with this stuff, perhaps. And then when you go inside the cathedral, um, I was actually in a rush, um, so I couldn't actually do a full tour of the cathedral and get much image of, imagery of this, but I did go into the main hall, you know, and it's beautiful. It's truly incredible. The, the rose glass windows reflecting on the floor looked amazing. Um, but you look at it, you know, and, and you see the stonework, and it's it's truly incredible how heavy some of these stones are, especially the ones on the floor. You know, and, and the precision, how how close together they are, how perfectly cut up these stones are. And you do have to wonder, like, how on earth did people with horse and carriages build this, you know? Um, it, it is incredible. It's it's one of those things you can't fully appreciate until you're there in person. You know, you can talk about these things to, to the world's end, but when you actually see one, it, it kind of slaps in the face of most of your preconceived theories and ideas. And it really does, in this new perspective of the Millennial Kingdom coming and going, or the Tartarian angle, when you look at these with that new perspective, you can see it. You're like, yeah, okay, I get it now. All right, these things are something else. These are a revenant of something else. And maybe they weren't places of worship originally. Maybe they were machines of some kind, cathodes, cathedrals, you know, maybe some kind of energy ether harvesting device. For, for the age of, of running waters of life, you know, where Christ ruled or something. <laughs> Maybe they were medical centers, healing centers of some kind, um, using sound and frequency and energy. I'm not going to try and get too woo with all that right now, you know, but you, you like I said, in the presence of these things, you, you can feel it, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, something, something was going on here, something big. And Lincoln is full of these type of buildings, these really old buildings and Lincoln Cathedral wasn't perfect okay there's that too it felt like it was leaning a little bit like it was just a little bit wonky okay as amazing in detail as it was it's not keeping itself together that well I mean originally Lincoln, Lincoln Cathedral if you didn't know had a spire a really tall point to it which collapsed and killed a lot of people i think and i could be wrong here i could be wrong i need to check the date maybe the date actually matches up with something tartaria related or then kingdom related but uh i think it was around the 1600s maybe around that time period um i could be wrong it might be earlier or later but um yeah it collapsed and killed a lot of people but with that spire it was actually taller than the great pyramid it was one of the tallest buildings you know around at the time um, I'm sorry, that's just my uh, my uh, camera turning off there for the car. But yeah, you know, it was it was really tall originally, and probably a, a quite. I mean, it's a sight to behold now. It towers over everything. Every other building in, the, in its vicinity, it just pales in significant. In, in, it's tiny, you know, <laughs> in comparison to it. It's it's truly just an imposing thing at the top of this great hill. You know, this very steep hill, and it's. And with its spire, I couldn't imagine what that would have been to look like. But it, um, in terms of technology, as gathering energy from the ether in order to power the area or something, that spire would have made a lot of sense as a useful tool to be involved with this this apparatus, which we call cathedrals today. And I can kind of see it all. I can really see it all, you know. And what's funny about Lincoln as well is it has a strong uh, steampunk culture, you know, and these people going around in old-timey 1800 clothing with goggles on and things like this, and they have... And I saw quite a few just being there on the weekend, you know, <laughs> and nothing special was going on, but people dressed like that there. And, you know, steampunk itself reminds me of like a, a Tartarian world, you know, where there's flying machines and, and cog steam energy like machinery everywhere. And it's kind of, there's some echo of that. I mean, Lincoln Cathedral is so, is very strange, even below the cathedral and Deep within Steep Hill itself, which it's on, are caves. Just long networks of caves. There's some kind of underground tunnel system, um, which I cannot get access to. But um, I remember some guy who lived on Steep Hill uncovered an entrance to one of them in his basement. You know, and There's loads of stories like that, and they since get filled up, you know, and you can't go in there. But as above, so below, you know, the cathedral above was just part of the whole structure. Below into the hill, it carried on and more stuff was going on, you know. It's 
it's a complex thing. And I thought I'd just bring that to your attention. I've been, I've been looking and analysing. I'll share some of these pictures with you. But um, I, I can see the argument for these things have been defaced with demonic iconography as soon as a short season started and the millennium uh, reign ended. I can see that in real time. Yes. it's con These cathedrals are constantly being renovated, which means old stone work, which is weathered away, is being replaced by new stone work where they can make changes, any changes, any change they want, really. And I doubt people are going to be around or noticing enough to, to see the differences before and after to the point where the public are going to notice or care. I really don't see it happening that way. Um, so, yeah interesting definitely interesting um i've been to i've been to another cathedral in york as well not that long ago and i got the same vibe from it i got the same vibe but that face with the horn sticking out on the lincoln one with that's been defaced that was interesting definitely and um the, the thing about lincoln is i get a weird atmosphere from it i always have living there and this is more of a personal anecdote type thing but I saw a lot of UFO phenomena in Lincoln when I lived there for three years. A lot, right? Lights just manifesting and disappearing in the sky. Orbs of light. And I'm not talking about stars, you know. These are something else, a much closer, much brighter, much bigger, much more unusual in movement. And I really got into the UFO stuff there because cause I was seeing it with my own eyes so regularly. There's an energy in the atmosphere there. That's all I can describe it as. Um, things things look different as well. It's you know I, I live in the northwest of England and this is the East Midlands, so it's the other side of the country. And even I I always notice the trees there are paler than they are here in the northwest. The sky there is paler. It's a paler baby blue rather than the deep blue and purples we get here. It's just it's, and it's not even that far. It's only like a hundred and forty miles east. You know it's not that far really in the grand scheme of things, but. Everything's different there. The, the atmosphere completely changes. It's flat. It's an incredibly flat land. You you get to the top of Steep Hill where Lincoln is, the only hill in Lincoln practically, and you can just see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. You know, I got a photo of, as an example to show you for that. And I was thinking, like, you know, it's, it makes sense to build a cathedral like this here when you have such a profound view of so much of an area, you know, just by placing this thing here, this viewpoint, this tower, this cathedral. And there's, there's something just about the UFO phenomenon. It's straight, even driving home today when I was, well, not today, yesterday, when I was driving home back west, I saw in the sky a phenomenon, a light phenomenon, which I used to see quite regularly when I lived in, in Lincoln. And it was like a, it was, Broad daylight, by the way, you know, this is three in the afternoon, the sun wasn't setting yet or anything, it, was, it wasn't a star, but for some reason, it just, while driving, my view, I could see an incredibly bright light just glow and get bigger, and then just fade away and disappear, you know, and it wasn't the reflection of a plane, it was far too bright for that, it was, it was white fire, it's the only way I could describe it, you know, and it had that otherworldly etherical energy aesthetic about it you know and, and when i saw that as i was leaving lincoln i felt like it was a bit of a nod and a wink to you know okay yeah i remember this you know i remember this now you know i i had an experience where um, when i was walking just through through lincoln it's just it's a small city you know but it was in early in the hours of the morning i was walking home and um no one was around it was quiet and I could see just above some of the terrace houses. And these are old houses, by the way. They all have that old world architectural feel and design to them. This, this, this really classical Gothic mixed with um, Victorian. They're just old, okay, you know, and, and charged with history. And just above these houses was, were these orange fireballs just appearing and disappearing moving in a line, to, moving in a big group together, like, I don't know, 30 of these fireballs all together, just moving across above these houses. But they were appearing out of some invisible vortex and disappearing as they moved across into an invisible wall. And they were just travelling to and from these two points, you know, these, these massive energy balls. And as soon as more disappeared into this one invisible barrier, more were appearing equally on the other side in true Pac-Man style, you know. 
And um, I'll never forget that because I was frozen with awe. And then they, they faded away. And I was like, I didn't, why didn't I film that? <laughs> what was I thinking? And I just didn't think. You, you, when you see something like that, it, you just you just freeze. Because you, you cannot comprehend what you're looking at because it's new. It's, it's, it's just beyond my comprehension of, of the laws of physics. I understand them, you know. And I don't know what that was, but this is the t that's just the type of things that happened in Lincoln, you know. Um, and again, going back there and just seeing this cathedral from this new perspective and analysing it, it's kind of only solidified for me that, yes, these things are, are incredible. Okay, they, they are something else. And they have certainly been defaced since their original intention, their original purpose. They've become something else today. But they are still awe-inspiring on the surface, but when you look at them in detail, you can see the hand of the modern man, of the modern artist on there, changing things. You can see it. Um, but the core structure and the inside is, is unbelievable too. The one thing I'll say about Lincoln as well is their mascot is a demon. It's the Lincoln Imp. And there was a lot of artwork plastered all over the high street in Lincoln that I noticed showing this imp with pride, this demon all over the walls. And it's got a very Gorgon-esque looking face to it, you know. Um, and the imp itself is in in between a V arch within uh, at the top of a pillar within the back of the um, cathedral itself. And that's why people point out to it. The original imp is incredibly worn down now, I think. But uh, and they have they take pride in it as a funny thing, you know. That they constantly uh, reference in and show everywhere in the gift shop. <laughs> I thought it was funny that I see this this demon everywhere, and this cathedral is incredible, and it makes you wonder why that tiny little eroded imp is the thing that was decided to be the main focus. You know, why was that the thing they focused on the most? and made the symbol for this this beautiful old city that again feels like the hand of man getting in the way there of that feels like a little season move you know to take the focus away from the beauty of of the city and and the land and and this cathedral and put the focus on the one demon within it like <laughs> that seems like a little season move to me um but there you go just just some thoughts guys um I'm going to be doing a few live shows this week, so I will be back as well. But I thought I'd just share with you some, some information, some pictures from my trip there. And a few little random thoughts relating to this little season thing. Um, yeah, so take it easy, guys. And as always, God bless. I want you to get together.